almost cut my hair. It's in, it's in standard tuning, but the whole guitar is tuned down a full step. At least it is for the version we're playing, just on solo acoustic guitar. The original version actually is uh, at standard pitch. But we'll, let's, let's get in tune for this version. Certainly makes it easier to sing. Tune your first string down to D. Second string down to A. Third string down to F. Fourth string down to C. Fifth string down to G. Sixth string down to D. We're in the key of A minor. All your normal chord shapes will work. But we're down tuned by a full step. Now what we're going to do here to learn this is look at the main sequence that he plays and that'll get you through the whole song and then we'll follow it with just a couple of examples of little licks, improvisational tricks that he puts in that uh, I'll show you and then you can put in similar things wherever you feel it. Here's the main three chord riff. again. We've got an A minor 7 chord high up the neck. You want the 4th and 2nd strings at the 10th fret. Now he never quite strums this exactly the same way all through the song, but a good standard pattern is down, 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 up. The thing about that is what makes this song really work is dynamics. So make the first down quite emphatic, and then the down, down, up just sort of hinted at on the higher strings. Now come down to chord number two, kind of an E minor -y type chord, the fourth string at the ninth fret and the second string at the eighth fret, same thing. On both those chords, if you can, try and avoid the sixth string. I've got my thumb sitting on it to mute it. And then chord number three is the fourth and second strings at the seventh fret, and that goes for a full bar. There I'm going down, 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 up, down, down, up, down. So the full two bar riff is one, two, and a three, four, and a one, two, and a three, four, E, and one. Round you go again. I've just given you is by no means the only way to strum this. If you're uh, an experienced strummer, strum it whichever way feels comfortable to you and vary it. But there's a pattern for you if you find a pattern helpful. That introduction goes four times and then it continues into the song, the same chord sequence. Almost cut my hair Notice that the key to strumming that is the difference in dynamics. The first down of every new chord needs to be emphatic and then really back off for the rest of the strumming. Also notice the space. You don't have to fill all the gaps. Leave that space. It's part of the sound of this track. Later in the song, when you want to raise the energy level, you can make those quiet strums more emphatic. By the time you get to, say, verse 3... There I'm just filling in more of the gaps and making those very quiet high-string strums into full strums. Keep the dynamics changing during this song to retain the interest. Another thing to bear in mind on the 7th fret chord is that at the end of it, he often comes off to open strings before going back to the 10th fret chord, like this. That last up-down on open strings before going back to 10. Off 10. 
see how that's working. And the offs are emphatic before coming back to the 10th fret. Alright, when you reach that final time on the 7th fret chord, in my way, we're going to go to a normal C chord, unusually for David Crosby, a straightforward chord. Same sort of pattern, keep the rhythm very slow, strum it now in full chords. Down, 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 up. And the next chord is kind of an E minor 7, the tab calls it G over B, it's all the same. It's just the 5th string, 2nd fret. The 6th string is not in this chord, you don't hear it. So down, 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 up, and that's leading to A minor, full bar. Down, 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 up, down, 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 up. So that's the three chord sequence there. But I didn't, and I wonder why. Now he goes to F major 7, which is just an F chord without the first string finger lying down. So you've got the first string open, down on that chord, then add the first string at the third fret and pat out the bar like that. Then E minor is bass end of the chord, and then again add the first string third fret, down, down, down. So you get this. I want to let my Now leave that little finger where it is and make a D chord around it. You want the chord of D sus4, which is just D plus that first string third fret. Again, he keeps this very spare, just down, 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 sometimes just on the highest possible strings, and then he's going to go to a normal D chord for a bar. Sometimes he won't even do all four, he'll just go one, two, miss, four, lots and lots of space. With the vocal. And I feel like I owe it to someone. And you see that after that D, four beats, we just went back to the main three chord riff again. Now that is the song. What happens after verse 1, and indeed after verse 2, is he plays through the three chord riff twice more, then goes into the new verse, and as the song goes on he raises the dynamics a little bit, but he's still not afraid at any point to raise the dynamics and then come back to quieter dynamics, and that's the key to making this song sound great. To, move be to use the three chord example again, to move for example between a raised dynamic point That's when this song sound at its, sounds at its most effective, when you can balance those two elements. After verse 3, and notice by the way on verse 3 that uh, the vocal part only goes twice around the three chord sequence before it jumps to the chord of C. You can see that on your song sheet. There's an outro to this song and it's just the three chord sequence. He plays it six times and he ends on the seventh fret chord. So the song sort of finishes suspended in midair, which is a very effective ending. But he's also putting in little improvisational sections in this song around the three chord sequence. Now what he does is always plays the three chord sequence down to the seventh fret. Once he gets there though, we've already seen that he throws in open strings. He also, as the song moves on, gradually introduces these elements as well. You've got the the seventh fret shape now down at the fifth fret, fourth and second strings. You've got the fourth fret and third fret, fourth fret of the fourth string, third fret of the second string. You've got that same shape down at the first and second frets, and the open strings. Now notice that coming from the seventh fret, you've got a descending sequence. Seven, five, four and three, two and one, open. And he uses that sequence a lot to improvise around. So you get this kind of thing.
hear that coming down there? Now for many of you that will be enough just to know that. Just play around with that, experiment with it yourself. You've got all kinds of little rhythmic ideas you can throw in around using the use of those chords. Sometimes he stops chords in sequences like that. You see, down, up, stop, down, and coming down the sequence. All kinds of ideas. There's a limitless, limitless number of ways you can put those, those improvisational type chords together. So from that point, just play around with it. That should be everything you need for Almost Cut My Hair. It's a lot of fun because of the improvisational, improvisational element to it. So get your guitar tuned down and play around with it. seventh fret chord.